Hello and welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and today we are about to set off on a realistic adventure. But before we dive into the adventure itself, I want to say thank you to Thrustmaster for sponsoring the controller cam and for sending me out one of their eSwap XR controllers. If y'all would like to get one for yourselves, make sure to use the link to the Thrustmaster eShop in the description down below. And now... First up, we have a Can Jam, aka the console-friendly four-seat Can-Am on the trailer. And full disclosure, this was recorded on an Xbox Series X, so everything that you see in this video is available on next-gen consoles. This, once again, this was recorded on an Xbox Series X, not a PC, just in case you were curious about that. Now, the trailer that we are using is from Dub's Trailer Pack, and the truck that we are using is the Mega Cab HD. Now, the map we are on on today is Rock Runners Mud Park, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to haul that Can-Am, that four-seat turbo Can-Am, out to one of my favorite trails on this map that I rarely ever see people using, and I'm not quite sure why, because it's a really awesome trail, especially if you like doing realistic, mud-focused trail riding. And because we're using the wheel module on the Thrustmaster controller, we're able to get a little bit of extra precision when we're out on the trails, and we're also able to really dial in the speed that we want to turn the wheels at, which, as you'll see a little bit later, definitely amps up the realism factor a lot, especially for something like a side-by-side -side or a Jeep or an off-roader or really anything that you would use for an adventure like this. Now, making our way down the four-lane highway, we're going to go ahead and make a slight, well, I say a slight left. We're going to make a massive 90-degree left into the mud park, but again, the cool thing about using this wheel module is that you can make a lot of these turns really, really smoothly in SnowRunner with that wheel module. It's really nice to use. And as I was on my way out to the trail, one of the things I was thinking about was I was kind of reflecting internally on how well SnowRunner actually runs on a next-gen console with all of these mods enabled. It runs so smoothly, and I know that it's not really that big of a, you know, like a resource hog of a game. It doesn't really, you know, bog down a system much, but it's really nice to be able to have these mods on screen, like, all in the same scenario, all at the same time and they just play super, super smoothly, especially if you watch the frame rate. Like, this is playing at a super consistent FPS, and it's just really, really pleasing to play the game, especially with all of these mods on. And again, you know, if you went back in time to the Mudrunner days and told people that they were going to be driving a truck like this, towing a trailer like that, with a side-by-side -side on it, on console in a runner game, they would have told you you were nuts. They would have said, oh, you're absolutely insane. That's never going to happen. Take that somewhere else. You're just hyping yourself up for nothing, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? Here we are today on a console literally towing a Can-Am freaking side-by-side, -side, a four-seater turbo Can-Am side-by-side at that, towing it around with a car trailer behind a lifted Mega Cab dually on like 44-something inch tires. It's like 40-ish inch tires. That's just insane to me, and I know, yes, that there has been so much back and forth over the life of SnowRunner with, you know, what console mods work on which console, and, you know, some console mods getting approved and then removed, and then some getting updated and others not getting updated, and, and you know, the community having this crazy level of up and down and up and down, and some mismanagement from the devs. Even aside from all that, to be able to do what I'm doing right now, on a console, I still think is freaking sick. So switching into and firing up the Can-Am, what I really wanted to do with this thing is not only did I want to take it on these trails, but I also wanted to spend a little bit more time on the interior view than I usually do. And the reason for this is because when you're using that wheel module, it really, I think, helps translate to that in-cabin experience a lot better, especially in something like SnowRunner. And you'll see what I mean once we get out here on this trail. Now, me being in first-person view uh, initially didn't last super long because I ended up, well, uh, I ended up hitting the depth limit of the camera. And the whole thing about the camera being depth, like, depth limited is a little bit annoying, especially when you get into an area like this and then the game denies you your cockpit cam. It's like, no! You are not allowed to look inside your vehicle right now. You are submerged. And I don't know if there's, like, a weird thing with the graphics where they won't let, you know, like, where something freaks out 
if you try to, you know, have the player in first person view while underwater. Maybe it does something weird to the graphics. I don't know. Or maybe it's like, maybe it's some kind of thing that they feel like it would break immersion. Maybe it looks weird. I'm not sure, but I would kind of, like, I almost wonder if that's something that they could give us the option to turn off eventually. Because it's really annoying for the game to keep switching you out of first person view if you like to be in first person view. Now, I know that the majority of the player base for this game plays in third person, and there's a lot of people that that only play in third person. There are actually people out there that get annoyed when you jump into first person. They're like, no, get out of first person. We only want to see the outside of the vehicle. And I'm like, I mean, I get it. Like, I play the majority of the time in third person as well. But at the same time, I think it's kind of fun sometimes to play in first person, especially if you're out here on a map like this with friends and you're all like, you know, let's say you're all in side by sides or you're all in Jeeps or you're all in something that you would totally use in a place like this in real life and you want to kind of extra immerse yourself in that experience of off-roading with your friends, sometimes it's nice to do that in first-person view. And I think that's why it would be nice to be able to turn off the weird dynamic of forcing you out of the first-person cam when the uh, the head of the player's character goes underwater. Now, another thing I did want to talk about is the lack of maps available on next-gen consoles, because I do think it's a pretty big issue, considering the fact that if you go on the mod browser on previous-gen consoles, or you go on the mod browser on PC, you will find a lot of maps, a lot of, like, you know, off-roading, rock-crawling, mudding maps available uh, on the previous generation and uh, previous generation consoles and the PC version of the game. However, on the next-gen consoles, the next-gen consoles have kind of been shortchanged a little bit with map selection, and there's uh, there's a decent amount of vehicles, and there's more vehicles getting approved and reapproved every well, almost every day. I'm gonna say every week at this point because for whatever reason, the devs seem to have gotten a little bit slower at approving mods, although this. This latest batch of mods that have been waiting for either approval in general or next-gen reapproval has taken a lot longer, and I wonder if that has something to do with um, maybe some of the things that got added to the game in the latest DLC. Because every time a new season gets released, there are things that have to be adjusted, whether it's small adjustments or large adjustments, in different mods, otherwise they don't fully, like, play very well with the game anymore like they play fine in the sense of like actually driving around in game but I mean from a technical standpoint like the files of the mod talking to the game in a way that they can both understand sometimes the new season updates will sort of break up that communication a little bit break up that line of communication a little bit between the mod and the game and it's usually not so much to where you know the connection is broken like the mods and the game can still talk to each other usually However, it's it, it does create these little weird hiccups in communication from time to time, and I've seen that affecting vehicles to some degree, but it also affects maps a lot. And if you talk to some map creators, uh, they'll tell you similar things, that especially certain updates to the game have had a particularly uh, surprising impact on the way both the maps work and the way the map editor itself works. And the issues with modded maps not being able to communicate very well with the game after certain season updates um, is actually one of the reasons why some of Big Dub's maps never were able to make their way to console, and some of them were extremely well received by the community, they had custom buildings and all of these things that people were really excited about, but something that got changed somewhere along the line made it so that those maps weren't able to be approved and I still we still don't have an exact reason why I don't have an exact reason why so I'm not going to speculate but that was a big letdown for a lot of people but make no mistake, I don't say any of this to create any kind of back and forth between the modding community and the development team. Um, the development team gave us a massive game that allowed us to explore some of our, literally like some of the off-road scenarios we've always wanted to explore, especially on a console, in a way that wasn't possible before. And I am so incredibly glad that the developers built a game that we were able to do that in. But at the same time, I also want to be able to see the mod community 
really thrive, and I want to see these mod creators be able to deliver all of the amazing creations that they make to the console community. And I know that there are some people out there in the community that, you know, may even poke at the console people from time to time, like, like, oh, well, you would have this if you, I don't know, had a PC, and that's such a crappy viewpoint. I'm sorry, but that's such a crappy viewpoint. And look, for branded mods, that's one thing, but here's the thing, you know, if it's a map and someone's like, well, why can't we have this on console, and your only response is, well, I uh, should have got a PC, that's just a crappy response. I'm sorry, but it is, well, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry, that's just a crappy response, and there's no reason to give that response. Maybe, maybe they aren't able to have a PC, maybe there isn't space in the house for one, maybe they, you know, they have whatever console that they're, you know, that was in their house, you know, either way, like, firing back at somebody like that does nothing for the community, it really doesn't. Now, if someone is like, hey, how do I get branded trucks, well, you gotta be on PC for that, and explaining that is one thing, but being just crappy to people over a map is another thing entirely. But if y'all enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, and I will see y'all next time.